Hello, everyone. So I was um, really excited to be here today. Um, I traveled all the way um, from Ithaca, New York, to, uh, for this event, and um, I was really inspired to see that in our mix we have so many amazing builders, innovators, coders, and really young one as well, so thumbs up. Next year, I'm hoping to see a few more girls who innovate as well. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping things will change, because when I grew up in Bangladesh, I never touched a computer. So and, and I'm now a professor in computer science, so a lot can happen. And, and when, I, when I actually, I did my PhD at MIT, when I got into MIT for my graduate studies, my boyfriend dumped me because of that. Um, and then I, when I was doing my graduate work, I got uh, questions more when I visited about whether I'm going to get married or not than about my studies. Today, as a faculty member, I get letters that say, she is good even though she is a woman. So we need to change that. And if there's only one thing we can do is change it early, because there's a lot of research that shows that um, how we educate our young girls from the very early age, from the toys they play, to how we respond to them breaking things makes a huge difference. And we know that breaking things leads to innovation. So let's actually change that. So that was... That was a digression to, from my actual talk. Um, what I really want to talk about today is health, and particularly mental health. Um, so let me start with a question. How many of you have um, taken care of or supported a friend or a family member who has suffered from cancer? There are quite a few. I, I have a hard time seeing with the light. So how about cardiac illness or heart disease? Okay, so the last one, how many of you have supported or taken care of a friend or family member who have suffered from mental illness or suffered the illness yourself? Okay, so I can't really see that well, but um, usually when I ask that question, um, the, the, the answers are less than what we would think. About one in 23 people suffer from cancer, about one in 10 suffer from heart disease. How, any guess on how many suffer from mental illness? Well, one in six suffer from mental illness. So that means if there's, I think I was told there were about um, 800 people here. So there's about more than around 150 of us here who actually have some form of mental, suffer from some form of mental illness. So one of uh, one of the, uh, the challenges are most of us understand what is means to, uh, understand what it means to suffer from heart disease or um, cancer or various types of physical illness. But the truth is most of us experience mental illness without ever acknowledging it, understanding it, or being treated for it. And, and the big challenge there is that there is no blood test or medical exam that will give you a yes or no answer for mental illness. But there are important and meaningful cues in how we behave in the world that can be um, in, uh, predictive of someone's risk for mental illness. So let me give you some examples. And these are observations made by actual patients who suffered from mental illness. My wife can tell by my walk. I didn't want to wake up. I was having a much better time asleep. My legs bounce, speech goes fast, I even eat too fast. I barely have any social contact. So our physical activity, our um, sleep patterns, our speech, and our social contact or social activity provides meaningful cues about our mental state. And um, these are all examples from a wide range of, of mental illness. There are patients with bipolar disorder, patients with um, clinical depressions, patients with a mania, as well as schizophrenia. So it, it covers a wide range of where we see changes in their behavior pattern in everyday, day-to-day -day activity that we do, and, and there's um, a, their um, susceptibility or risk for decline in mental health. But there's a good news. We can measure each and every one of these behavior using something that's in each of our pockets, 
smartphones. Smartphones can, are with us all the time. They have sensors that measure our movement, our speech, that can be used to measure our, our sleep. And we can re use these information to correlate or uh, understand, relate to a person's uh, mental well-being. So let me give you some example, a little bit more example in more detail. Let's talk about sleep. So here's an example of two individual sleep pattern. The top one is a patient individual who is normal, and the bottom is someone who is um, depressed. So this is, look, is showing you the brain activity over time, and you can instantly see differences, right? So you can see that in the depressed patient, the duration is a lot shorter, so the person is sleeping less, and the activity is dampened, and often relates to the quality of sleep. So in, in depressed individuals, as well as more broadly in mental health, we see either um, insomnia, disturbed sleep, or hypersomnia, sometimes more sleep than no, uh, usual. And we can use sensors that are on our phone, and just by the way you use your phone, we can measure sleep duration, sleep quality, and sleep interruptions very robustly. And not only that, we can also tell what type of um, kind of body clock do you have. Are you an early riser or a late riser? Here's the data. Here's showing you eight days of data of a person. The blue um, solid bars of person's sleep and the red is phone usage. You can clearly see some of the patterns. Um, for example, in the day seven, you can see that the person has an interruption, three in the morning, and um, they, had a, they woke up, actually, in this case, to drop their uh, friend at the airport in the middle of the night, and then the person in day eight is actually catching up by sleeping more. And, and doing some kind of learning from the data uh, with uh, machine learning, uh, you can actually reliably pick up that, reliably um, pick up also um, interruptions, and all, uh, using the sensors, you can say, what is, wh what is disrupting the person's sleep? Is, it, is there something in the environment, or is it their behavior that's, uh, that's actually causing them to sleep less? How we speak matters. We can actually use cell phones, and which we know it's one of the oldest sensors on the phone, to actually reliably capture speech. Not only that, in our work, we have developed some privacy-sensitive um, techniques that is able to detect when someone speaks, how someone speaks. So whether someone is speaking fast or slow, in a monotone, or has inflection. As you recall, one of the patients was referring who had suffered from mania, I speak faster. Uh, depressed people have been measured to speak slower, they walk slower, so you can actually pick up these behavioral, often known as behavioral indicator, to see if someone is declining. So from this information, we can figure out how many conversation a person has, who the people they're talking to, how long do they talk to them. Here, the lines indicate the different conversations, with the length being the duration they're talking to. So this person is talking to different people um, for different lengths of time, in small groups, large groups. If this person, let's say three months later, is look, looks like this, you know something has happened. Um, the, the, here, the person is not engaging with the, the community or the rest of the world. It's uh, barely speaking with anyone at all. And this can provide really meaningful cues about a, a person's mental, mental health state. And we have actually um, evaluated and validated that working with clinicians and health, um, health doctors. And what we've seen that just looking at simple measures of how someone speaks can be revealing of a person's uh, mental health state. There, uh, we saw correlations with depression, general mental health, and also how sociable a person is. So very, very simple information collected from devices that are with us 24-7 can be used to predict a person's risk for decline. Right now, we are in doing clinical trials with patients with schizophrenia. Also, we've uh, we done pilot work with patients with bipolar disorder as well as depression. And there's huge amount of potential of using technology as an early indicator that something might be happening. So now, for, for the longest time, it was impossible to even uh, measure these behavioral changes unless you have someone following you around and taking notes 24-7, and a person's uh, memory and, uh, is compromised when they often, uh, they're suffering from mental um, health problems. 
So now we can actually get reliable measurements of, of behavior, but that's, uh, that alone is not enough. We need to provide the right intervention. So how do we go from data to intervention? And in a, as Munira mentioned, in a country like Bangladesh and even in the US, um, access to mental health treatment is still poor and because of stigma, because of good quality uh, intervention, but the research has shown the right behavioral intervention of bringing the uh, person's behavior back to normal can sometimes prevent mental health decline or stabilize the person's mental state. So we need to really look at intervention as well as measurement. We have built some um, very simple technology. So in terms of therapist in a pocket, if your phone knows that you're having irregularity with your sleep that is associated to mental health decline, it can give you suggestions that a therapist might give. Oftentimes in, in behavioral therapy, there are concrete suggestions. Now we can actually d give it at the moment the person needs it the most. We can also mine a person's behavior, and based on their routine, the fishes around it is looking at their social interaction. So the more, if you have more fishes close to, close to you, that means you're interacting more socially. And the color is telling you how much you're sleeping, so if it's dark or, or, or brighter. So this is, this is meaningful information right at your uh, fingertips, and people look at their phone at least 100 to 150 times a day. And, and, and it's also privacy sensitive. No one has to know what information this is conveying. It's, it only has meaning, meaning to you. So treating mental illness is, is, is complex, right? And we need to have social support, which is something that is lacking in most societies and definitely in, in a society like Bangladesh. Even if we acknowledge the problem, one of the very important cue is our behavior. And behavior tracking and behavior sensitive intervention has been really challenging so far and we hope that our work can actually tackle some of that and deliver that measurement and intervention in a scalable and accessible manner. And then finally there is medication. And just like when if we treat heart disease, diabetes, our, uh, it's, a, it's a combination of medication and changes in our lifestyle. Mental health is no different. We need to make changes in our lifestyle and also have the right type of medication. So um, we need to kind of, it's, it's time that we stop thinking of mental health problem as an isolated problem. It affects all, all of our health. Uh, so, Research has shown that um, patients uh, uh, who are depressed, their immune system is suppressed, so they're more susceptible to physical illness and recover slowly, so it affects all our illness. And we also need to stop thinking of mental illness as a sign of weakness or a lack of willpower. Just like any other physical illness, it is an illness. And if treated, people can actually, just like examples of patients who have suffered through depression and other mental illness, um, can be successful, powerful, productive, and brilliant. So I want to end with a quote from Mike Wallace, who is a um, co-host of the TV show 60 Minutes. There is nothing, repeat, nothing to be ashamed of when you are going through depression. If you get help, the chances of you licking it are really good, but you have to get yourself onto a safe path. And many people don't get that help, have an increased risk of suicide, failed relationship, and higher unemployment. So we hope that the technology that we are building will bring the help that many people need right to their pocket and live them, help and uh, live a balanced, happier, more productive life. Thank you.